that actually that is the uh, performance evaluation of uh, canal irrigation system okay, that is uh, an element interested and uh, on behalf of our agricultural engineering college and the such institute that we send us to Kumulu, uh, we, uh, on behalf of all, we, we, we hold out with the welcome user for this actually. And also I like to welcome On this occasion, I'd like to welcome uh, the Professor and Head the Department of Soil and Water Conservation Engineering, the Professor and Head the Department of Irrigation and Drainage Engineering, the Professor and Head the Department of Renewable Energy Engineering, and of course, uh, uh, for our team and all the members who joined through online, and our students uh, to this particular lecture. I welcome you all again uh, for this for, for, for this uh, uh, this important lecture. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Good morning, all of you, my students. Good morning. Uh, my name is Mr. Kamala. I did my alumni of PNLU. All my UG, PG, PhD at PNLU. I did my I thank uh, our university, Tamil Nadu University, for giving me the opportunity to come over here and evaluate the sequence speaker and evaluate uh, Dr. Rahul. So, um, today I am going to explain this uh, topic which is uh, relevant uh, and it is an informative topic for especially for. Uh, our agriculture engineering students, that's why I selected this topic. And I had already a few students, few PhD students working on this subject actually. Uh, um, three, four, and six students, and also two PhDs. Uh, among them, one PhD has worked on this uh, problem. That is around, this is actually the performance evaluation of uh, canal irrigation system. Uh, that is a wide uh, topic. And uh, I have taken the case study as Telugu project. As you all know, you might have heard about the Telugu project. Telugu project is uh, the water. Uh, this is actually drinking water project uh, between the Andhra uh, Pradesh government of Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu. It has started in during uh, the Ramana and uh, India period, mainly to supply drinking water facility to Chennai. Actually, three states have contributed uh, five TNC each from Kishanga, that is Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, and as well as Karnataka and Andhra uh, Pradesh and Maharashtra. So, they have, they have contributed five TNC each to uh, supply drinking water to uh, Chennai city actually. And meanwhile, the water is being taken from Sri Salam and the other way. Uh, uh, runs through on the place about uh, drought from the region of Nansima, especially Kadapa, Kadamur, and uh, uh, Nulu districts and the Hapsa Chitur districts. And uh, the main aim of the project is uh, for the supply and drinking water to Chennai. Uh, and uh, the entire project has been funded by the uh, government of Hazar, the government of Tamil Nadu. And uh, the MOE was signed between uh, earlier uh, so, you all know any system, uh, any project of implementation, we have to evaluate its performance time to time for its uh, maintenance uh, and also for updating and for keep uh, the project uh, life uh, for having uh, longer life of the project. For example, if you, for, uh, example, if you take uh, any vehicle, if you take we have to maintain, isn't it? We have to do uh, regular maintenance works and also we also uh, measure in terms of its performance. You take a vehicle, for example, how many kilometers it will give for each uh, liter of petrol, likewise, isn't it? Similarly, any project we are investing close of rupees, especially irrigation projects, and it has to be evaluated and uh, time to time and due to life as the lifespan exceeds, uh, we have to maintain these things. And also, we have to study the impact. What is the after before before implementation of the project, uh, any irrigation project? What is the situation? 
how many acres are unirrigated, how many, how much area for, how much uh, irrigation potential has been created. So before starting any project, the government and also funding agencies like World Bank or NABAD or uh, different state governments uh, will uh, make the project proposal, project appraisal. At the time, they, even the, uh, the starting, beginning, the proposal for uh, installation of the project also, um, they will be uh, started with certain objectives. And uh, accordingly, the, once the project has been sanctioned, it will be implemented. And later on, the funding agencies or the implementing agencies or the maintaining agencies, who are maybe they have to evaluate its performance. And the main objective should be the optimum utilization of the resources. There may be, say, for example, the farmers may demand once the project has been implemented, irrigation, so we are discussing about irrigation plan. Once the project has been implemented, the, but naturally there will be a lot of changes in the project area. For example, if it is a drought down area, before implementation of the project, there may not be any irrigation facilities. The farmers will grow, will grow certain uh, sharp uh, water requirement crops like uh, uh, groundnut or oil seeds or pulses like that, isn't it? Once the irrigation potential is created, naturally the farmers will shift for irrigated crops. For example, paddy or raw, uh, banana. So whichever gives uh, more, whichever gives more remunerative, naturally the farmers. So earlier they used to grow. Uh, because lack of because non-availability of irrigation water. Once the irrigation potential is created naturally, the farmers will grow uh, multiple crops as well as high demand, high irrigation requirement crops. So that is the objective of the uh, uh, starting of an irrigation project to bring, to bring more area under irrigation, isn't it? That's the, that's the main thing. And once the project is implemented, every year or uh, once in uh, three years, you have to the funding agencies or the government has to evaluate for various purposes, even for research purposes, how the project is going on and what are the whether the project can be extended to uh, irrigation canals can be extended to other areas or whether we can uh, we have implemented the actual potential uh, area has been created or not, uh, whether we can go for extending the same project to the water can be utilized to some other area. So all these works have to be carried out. Uh, once the project has been implemented, because you will have utilized the budget allotted in an optimal way. So, more area, our aim should be the more area has to be brought under cultivation. That is our net rate with respect to our equipment engineering point of view. And earlier, the other department people or the irrigation engineers uh, from civil engineering side, they used to evaluate the project based on the distributed network. Whether the uh, distributed network means not uh, with respect to the, they will go up to the on farm. Once the, once the water reaches the, to the farm, it is the role of the agriculture engineers who has to uh, get maximum potential or who has to extract maximum potential by recommending the optimum uh, irrigation water requirement and by suitably suggesting the uh, various crops depending upon the water availability. Every time, every year, the availability of water in the project will also varies, isn't it? Depending upon the rainfall, depending upon the runoff from the upstream areas, the water uh, potential of from that particular project will vary. So, depending upon the availability of water, the farmers have to make changes. They have to announce prior so much of water is available. The, sometimes the monsoon may be delayed. So we have to change the uh, release, dates of release of water. So everything is uh, systematically has to be done. The primary objective of the irrigation project from the agriculture engineering point of view is optimum utilization of available water and similarly timely, timely intervention of the distribution of water with respect to the farmers. And the farmers may make so much of demand. So naturally, when the, uh, again, there are so many uh, factors. The uh, Thailand farmers may not get sufficient water. The up, up, upstream uh, farmers, the farmers nearer to the project may get more water because the canal has to uh, cross them, the upreach up farmers. 
so the the balancing has to be done by the department so all these things will be uh, taken care of by the agriculture engineering department or agriculture engineers once the water reaches the ensemble so the project earlier as i told you the every irrigation project has been uh, evaluated for its performance based on the requirement or based on the intent by the either government or funding agencies or ngos who are maybe the these are all the stakeholders or the farmer uh, organizations all those things so earlier they used to evaluate with respect to the distributive after distributive system only that is whether the lc phase losses are there uh, any whether any evaporation losses are there whether any theft are there likewise they used to uh, the irrigation department used to evaluate its performance at distributive level or the uh, release of waters whether the, the regular maintenance all those things they used to be evaluated so now the concept has been changed now the concept is what is the yield in terms of crop parameters in terms of water utilized with respect to the various crop yield whether the agricultural yield food production whether the particular how much uh, uh, employment has been generated how much economy has been improved how many areas have been brought under uh, because of that particular project how much more irrigation potential potential has been created how the system is working whether the giving given water uh, what is the water efficiency whether it has improved or not so all these things have been uh, entered into the picture nowadays the a com uh, a combination of uh, crop parameters and also distribution parameters have been uh, implemented and the world bank is also funding they, uh, they are giving for renovation of the agriculture uh, renovation of the uh, irrigation projects uh, based on its performance evaluation so all the projects whatever whichever project in whichever uh, whichever state it is there the world bank or the banks or nabard or the financing agencies they are evaluating the projects after its uh, installation uh, time to time so the that i have to what is the procedures involved what is the procedure involved uh, in evaluation of the canal irrigation performance uh, that is that is today's my topic so i have taken this uh, because it's a uh, telugu ganga project actually related with tamil nadu and all of this and this is actually the project is aimed for the main aim of the project is for uh, <coughs> for the supplying drinking water facility to uh, chennai so that is about the preamble of the uh, importance of the the study so i have taken this uh, this is one of my phd students work and uh, the this has been carried out and i have certainly submitted so the for any for any project from you just have taken me the case study for this is this can be applied to any project suppose if you want to take some of the some of you students may take a pg program they can also evaluate the available nearby irrigation projects based on this type of uh, studies so here uh, we have done the this work uh, with respect to telanganga project though it is a, from the tamil nadu point of view it is only drinking water project but as the water reaches enters at pune reservoir at chennai uh, before that it crosses uh, four districts of andhra pradesh where the water is being utilized for irrigation uh, purposes so i'll tell you uh, the chronological what is uh, who has benefited how the andhra pradesh it is uh, benefited by both the states both tamil nadu as well as andhra pradesh in andhra pradesh we have created irrigation Larger area has been brought. Larger drought prone area. Earlier it is a drought prone area. I will show you the impact later in the in the presentation. Um, how the project has been utilized as irrigation project in other places. Okay. So these are the objectives uh, to study the resources inventory in terms of water resources and to assess the available surface water resources. and evaluate performance efficiency of water delivery system to evaluate suitable crop water allocation pattern for optimal use of canal water for growing multiple crops in the study area so the water what is the inventory what is the earlier prior to project water all the crops after the project how the what is the 
craft, what how the farmer's uh, livelihood has been changed, and how best we can further improve with the available water. So all these objectives have been uh, studied in this work. So when you come to the <coughs> project uh, about the project description, Telugu project is an interstate project on the Pradesh of Tamil Nadu and formulated to irrigate up to 2.3 lakh hectares under drought prone areas of Karnul, Kadapa and Chitur and Royal Sima and upland areas of Nello district. And from the Tamil Nadu point of view, it is only water, uh, drinking water project. Okay. So it is utilizing about 29 TMC of Krishna flood water flows and 30 TMC of Kannar flood water flows. It is also conveying 15 TMC of Krishna water to Chennai city for drinking purpose from the contribution of three Krishna basin states of Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. This is a tripartite agreement wherein Karnataka, Maharashtra and Andhra Pradesh have agreed to give 5 TMC of water each to, uh, for drinking purpose of the Tamil Nadu or to Chennai. And in addition to that, the overflowing water, flood water has been utilized by Andhra Pradesh as a for irrigation purposes. The original cost in 1983 it is around 637 crores, and uh, in 2018 it has become 7,470 crores. Okay, so because of the delay in uh, project implementation or step by step upliftment of the project, the project has been increased to 7,470 crores uh, from 637 crores. But the payment, the cost of uh, the project has been funded by Andhra Pradesh as well as Tamil Nadu. Okay. So there are uh, four different, apart from Pundi Reservoir from, uh, uh, in Chennai for drinking water purpose, there are four different uh, reservoirs they have constructed within Andhra Pradesh. That is Velugandu Balancing Reservoir with a capacity of 16.95 TMC and SPVB see, Reservoir 70 TMC, Swamsila Reservoir that 78 TMC and Kandalayar Reservoir 68 TMC. So these are the new constructed only because of only for the sake of Tiruganga project. These are all the projects that were constructed during the course of implementation of the project. So this is about uh, the location of the uh, Teluganga project. It is now situated in, uh, now Andhra Pradesh has been divided into two states, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. Now the, the project comes under the state of Andhra Pradesh. So this is the Teluganga main canal network within the Andhra Pradesh region. So if we see the main major districts in uh, Andhra Pradesh which are uh, benefited by the Tiluganga project are Chittur, Kadapa, Nellore and Karnul districts with Aikak area varying from 39,200 in Chittur district to, to uh, 21,730 uh, hectares in uh, Karnul district. Again there are they have given the various mandals in which these projects are the canal main canal passes through to reach the water to the Tamil Nadu to, to Chennai city. So we are discussing about only the irrigation point of view and the irrigation potential that is created within the Andhra Pradesh state. We are not discussing about the water availability or water that reaches to Chennai city. Even the main flow, the main aim is providing drinking water. It has become a multi-purpose irrigation as well as uh, water supply. Uh, project. So, if you see the this is the, the this uh, picture shows in each district, Karnul, Kadapa, and Nellore, uh, where the uh, eye cut contemplated in blue color and the irrigation potential created in green and balance to be created, the pending works in red color, and also stabilization of the eye cut in brown color. So, you see the equally the eye <coughs> cut contemplated prior to the uh, design of the project, almost 90% are uh, in some areas 90% of the work has been carried out for the creating irrigation potential and in some of the areas the ICAT has also been, ICAT means the command area. So the, uh, it has also been uh, regularized, it has stabilized. So objective wise methodology, 
So here we are using uh, um, remote sensing and GIS. This is the main tool because we have to study prior to the uh, prior to the project implementation and all the present situation. It's a very huge area we have to study, isn't it? So by utilizing the modern technology tools like remote sensing and GIS, we can find out the crop inventory. We can find out what is the uh, uh, what is the uh, condition of the crop, whether uh, the crop from head end to the tail end areas, all these things can be easily assessed by manually, it's not possible, though we are having a, a manual uh, workforce, but it is not possible to calculate to uh, assess the crop parameters only by, by, uh, by manual or by the ground staff, we can validate. So we have taken the remote sensing and GIS tools uh, to study the entire length of the main canal uh, for its crop parameters, for study of the crop parameters. This is about study of the resources inventory. So all these are all uh, uh, standardized procedure with respect to the remote sensing and GIS. I am not going in detail about the technical aspects. Okay, uh, just I am telling you by which process we can uh, actually find out or you can uh, evaluate the uh, uh, irrigation potential that is being created and uh, you can time to time every year also you can evaluate every year also you can evaluate the crop condition crop rotation crop calendar and uh, the position of the crop whether it is in good condition and what is the crop calendar also changes even sometimes the monsoon may be delayed what releases may be delayed the alternative is the farmers may change the uh, crops. If they, there is depth of water, they may go for uh, lesser utilization crop. They may abandon paddy sometimes. Uh, there is no water available. They go for short duration variety. So all these things can be uh, monitored by using the remote sensing and GIS. Okay, these are all the data required and there are some uh, data are freely available also uh, through internet that can also be utilized for example uh, the landsat 4 for 1993 so we, we have uh, done this work for prior to irrigation prior to starting of the project that is prior to 1997 and the latest is 2018 okay so these are the various procedures involved by utilizing the remote sensing and gas for crop mapping and acreage assessment during using the remote sensing and GIS techniques. This is the flowchart of water resources extraction in the Pilukunga project command area. So next is to, in addition to the canal water, not only canal water, we have to take into consideration of available surface water also. Surface water, uh, because of the rainfall, the uh, many tanks will be there in a particular area. And the, because of the groundwater richer, the wells will avail the irrigation also will be improved. So all these things also are actually taken into consideration for taking for finding out the impact of the project. This is the second objective. Similarly, this objective can be met by collecting the rainfall data from the meteorological department and using the there is another software, Cropware. Isn't it? You have here that Cropware. So with this software, you can also find out what is the uh, crop water requirement, how to balance for various crops, what is the demand of the uh, demand for that particular area, all these things can be calculated using the crop water software. Next is evaluate performance efficiency of the water delivery system. So this is actually basically the, I told you the earlier, the civil engineering people or department of irrigation people, they used to uh, evaluate the performance for its delivery system. Uh, from the water release side to the end point, the last point. So, say the, for example, they uh, they might have released 5 pmc of water in the beginning, in the headway. Whether the how much water has been actually utilized till it reaches to, to, to the based on the releases only, we'll calculate how much area can be irrigated and whichever areas uh, for, for various sub systems also will be there, sub canal systems also will be there. So, all these things have to be monitored. So that is to evaluate the, but there are different parameters to evaluate the efficiency of water delivery system using the 
different standard performance indicators. And that is another apart from remote sensing. Remote sensing and GIS are used for crop inventory and crop based uh, monitoring system. This is uh, this performance indicators are used uh, by the field staff uh, to calculate the distribution. How what are all the various uh, uh, performance indicators uh, um, with respect to the water distribution system in the canal command. So that is the third objective. And see, these are these are all the various parameters. Just I will uh, just I will give uh, the intensity of irrigation, uniformity index. So all these uh, formulas you can collect the data, the overall consumed ratio and the equity. Okay, yield per unit area, yield yield per unit uh, water consumed, crop yield ratio. So these are all the nine parameters based on which the water distributed system can be. These are all the various performance indicators by which we can find out the uh, performance of the water distribution system in the particular command canal command area, particular irrigation project. And finally, to evaluate the crop water allocation pattern for an optimal use of canal water for multiple crops in the study area. So we know now we know the what is the uh, performance in terms of performance indicators and what are all the crops that are grown with respect to crop inventory by using remote sensing and GIS, we know. Now, the final, what you are going to do by knowing this, we have to change, we have to get, our aim is to get more water use efficiency, to bring uh, maximum uh, production, crop production or yield or food production from that particular area. So, by knowing all these things, we finally how you can reallocate we can reallocate the or you can change the cropping pattern, you can advise the farmers time to time uh, based on the water availability to get more yield per unit of water, more yield, yield, more yield per each drop of water. That is, uh, that is uh, based on our recommendations and uh, based on the extension workers, that is line department, uh, agriculture department and agriculture department people will give recommendations so much water will be uh, available in the dam so much water will be released to the uh, farmers this region again depending upon the location depending upon the each district wise uh, whether they are uh, in the up upland farmers or tailored farmers so everything will be nowadays it is everything is automated within the, within no time you can calculate depending upon the availability of water you can plan isn't it so the priorly prior to uh, release of water it will be intimated to the various department line officials and in the in turn the jda or the line department means department of agriculture department of horticulture including industry some in some areas the water is also being taken away and even for some of the <coughs> line uh, towns also we are giving water we are supplying water in some cases what we are doing uh, when there is uh, excess floods we are taking that water and filling the tanks in that on the way we are filling the tanks in, the, in between and uh, the main canal area in that way also groundwater will be recharged and thereby the farmers can be uh, benefited by lift irrigation systems so all these things will be uh, monitored with the with the help of uh, the land department and finally the project every year we can prepare the project report, we can evaluate the project and this report will be submitted to the government and also the land funding agencies and every time you know the uh, every five years, six years we have to uh, maintain the project otherwise what happens the flow or the capacity of flow will be reduced because of the weed infestation, because of the uh, damage done um, by various reasons and the canal system. So that, uh, isn't it? So the canal system has to be maintained. So all these things uh, we need funds. So the, how, how for that we have to prepare the uh, budget. So the budget will be the um, funding will be done by the funding agencies. Based on the evaluation report, the funding agencies will fund the project. That is the main purpose of uh, doing this performance evaluation of each and each irrigation project. This has been this will be done by various agencies by irrigation department by central water commission by the state governments even in Tamil Nadu also everywhere all the states all the projects will be evaluated 
the procedure I am going I am in the telling so this is these are the various objectives of this particular performance evaluation of the irrigation systems so next is statistical analysis by regression models so this may not be useful for you but anyway I will tell you the uh, Teluganga project the final impact of the Teluganga project you can see uh, here in 1997 what is the situation that is before implementation of the project and now in 2018 what is the situation because of the irrigation potential created you can see the graph in Karif, Ravi and total area uh, in the year it is 2018 what is the total area and what is the change in because of the project how much area more area has been brought under various crops the major crops are paddy groundnut and total these are all the major crops so as i told you the groundnut requires lesser water prior to 1997 they used to grow groundnut now they are growing paddy see the difference you can see 1997 it is around 78 Seven lakhs eighty-six thousand. Sorry, seventy-eight, uh, seventy-eight thousand six hundred eighty-two hectares. What is that paddy? And whereas groundnut is thirty-five thousand one eighty-one hectares. Now you see the what is the the see the paddy crop one lakh eighty thousand three hundred and fifty. Have you seen how much many fold back? Nearly fifty-eight percent has been increased for the paddy area. And similarly, you can see the ground net. See, it is only 16,000, it is uh, 35,000 earlier. Now it is only 16,000. So that means what? More irrigation facility, more irrigation water was has been made available to the poor district people. So they are growing, they have shifted their uh, crops from ground net to the paddy. And similarly, the Karif area. And rebbe areas also because of the irrigation earlier they used to grow only current crops that is rainfall dependent. Now they are using in certain areas they are using both the seasons. They are going for irrigated crop. So you can see the drastic increase, abnormal increase in paddy cultivation. So this shows the importance of the project from the irrigation point of view by Andhra Pradesh because of the Teluganga project. Similarly, you can see um, all the, see 1997 is blue and in 2008 it is, it, it, this is in uh, 2018, this is crop situation. See in Paris, see the red one is uh, more, longer than the blue one. That is in 1997 to Paddy, you can see here, Karif Paddy has increased 53,000 in 1997. It has become 85,000 in 2018. Similarly, Ravi, Ravi Paddy, it is only 25,000 hectares, whereas in Ravi, it is 95,000 hectares. And similarly, the total, it is uh, for Paddy crop, it is earlier 78,000 odd, now it is 180,000 hectares. So this shows the, in the in increase in irrigation potential of the area because of the availability of water. Similarly, groundnut has been reversed. It has been decreased. You can see this color. This pink color shows groundnut area and this is decrease in groundnut because it is a drought crop or this is a less water utilization crop. So all this, where, what happened to this gap? This gap has been filled by the farmers with the, by growing the paddy. Okay. So priorly, in the prior slide, the paddy has been increased, red color. In the second slide, it is between 1997, what is this 1997? It is the base period, uh, project uh, starting period. Now almost 90% of the work is over. It is the 2018, the groundnut crop or the alternative crops have been reduced and the groundnut crop has been reduced and paddy has, uh, crop has been. Similarly, sugarcane. Similarly, in certain areas, they are doing only lesser amount that's why it was not shown here. Even banana they started growing in these areas. So these are the crop inventory models uh, results derived by the uh, remote sensing data. And you can see the 
crop condition based on any way. As I told you, you can also monitor every year the condition of the crop by using the remote sensing data. What is the good average and very good? So depending upon that, water releases, you can also monitor the condition of the crop. We can see this again the same thing. Uh, the, it is expressed in terms of the earlier, this table has been expressed in terms of pi diagram. So the various is about this particular slide is showing the crop condition or crop inventory by 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 utilizing the remote sensing data you can monitor the entire lakhs of um, acres of land what is the condition of the crop so this has been this time showing you to utilize the modern technology tools for assessment for similarly you can see the this same pipe diagram about the condition similarly yield this shows the yield potential that has been created in the Yellow Ganga project, various crops, paddy, groundnut, sugarcane, zawar, cotton chilies, sunflower, black gram, bajra, and green gram. And they have shown the various districts, Chittur, Nellur, Parnul, Kadapa, and the entire uh, TG period. That is in 1997 and 98, the yield data. Similarly, for 2018-19, you can see the this yield data has been drastically increased. All the short duration variety crops or drought prone area crops like pulses, oils have been reduced, and the irrigated crops data has been the yield has been increased because of the availability of water because of the creation of Kirubanga project. You can see the yield of the major crops. You can see the paddy has been increased, and similarly, some in some areas, even in Rabi, groundnut, irrigated groundnut has been grown. So, likewise, the more remunerative crops that is another advantage of creation of irrigation potential and utilization by the Andhra Pradesh as an irrigation source okay though it is contemplated as a drinking water project it has become major irrigation project in for in these four districts so similarly this is the NDVI of paddy at the different mandals and you can see the season and because of the uh, water releases, the crop calendar has also been changed. Earlier, they used to, farmers used to wait for the rainfall, then they start doing the all operations. Nowadays, what they do, the project people are informing the probable dates of release of water in the canal, so they are proper, proper planning can be done by the farmers because of this monitoring system. So, assess the available surface water resources for irrigation in Kiruganga project. So, I told you the rainfall has been taken into consideration and all those surface waters have been taken into consideration. And this is the mainly monthly rainfall received. And as I told you, the crop water requirement, grapes are based on crop water uh, software. We can find out the crop water demand. Accordingly, we can plan for supply of irrigation water to different regions of the command area. So these are all the various parameters and we will come for the crop parameters, crop performance indicators. So this is, this is the main thing to evaluate the performance efficiency of water delivery system using whatever we have discussed is about the agricultural point of view, crop inventory, crop condition, the yield parameters, all those things from agriculture point of view. Next is from distribution point of view, I told you there are different parameters. So these different parameters like equity, uniformity, irrigation intensity, overall consumer ratio, adequacy, crop yield ratio, these are all the parameters which can be measured to evaluate the performance of the distributed system. You can see the red color, these are all the performance indicators. All these indicators have given better results in, in from 1997 to 2018. For example, if you take equity, is 55.85 in 1997 it, it has reached 124 likewise you can see all irrigation intensity see only 18 percent 18 in 1997 and it is in 79.6 in 2018 that means because of the irrigation potential created the all the performance indicators have also been multiple multiple fold increase thereby naturally 
the crop production or yield production, yield potential will increase and it has contributed a lot to the economy. People have started, that's why it has become, we are stabilizing, we are supplying food to the increased population. That is the importance of irrigation projects. It is scientifically proven and the monitoring system will help the authorities to, to allot the funds, to take up the maintenance works. So all these things can be done based on this performance assessment system. So this has been explained. See, you can see the red color in 2018 and blue color in 1997. In all cases, it has been drastically the performance indicators is showing a lot of improvement. By seeing this picture, simply you can say because of the irrigation potential created because of the maintenance of the proper maintenance of the irrigation systems, multiple fold crop uh, yield potential. Now, all the crops, not only the, the earlier crops like groundnut, even paddy, all associated crops, the yield has been increased because of the increase in irrigation potential. So, with respect to the, this is also important from our point of view yield per unit area, yield per unit irrigation water supply, yield per water consumed crop yield ratio. These are all as agriculture engineers, you should be able to, be, these are all you will study in, the, in your courses. All these things you will be studying in your courses. So, in uh, various courses in irrigation engineering, you will be studying. So, all these things practically we are the department, once you join in the department, you are supposed to do all these things. These are all the various parameters that are used to uh, find out, the, to assess the performance to make the performance evaluation. So these are, these are all the outcome of the data that has been taken uh, between 2019, 2000, uh, sorry, 1997 to 2000. So change in performance indicators. As I told you, is the blue color a long bars because of the irrigation potential created, the performance has been drastically Similarly, within the within the region, within the I told you four districts are being supplied with water. We can also assess which district is performing better. Likewise, also we can do the assessment. So this is been ranking has been given uh, by various parameters and Nellur, Karnal, Chittur, and Kadapa. Finally, we can arrive which one is better utilizing the water resources. So based on this calculations. The which is better, Kadapa district is using more water use. That means the performance of the Kadapa district is better than other districts. Likewise, also you can compare the uh, present situation, which district you can also compare the uh, returns per unit quantity of water, per meter cube of water, how much uh, yield is being generated at different places. That also can be done. With this study. Is it in red Is it in red uh, Kadapa is not in red ridge actually. Uh, the Karnol is red ridge. This one is in red ridge. Karnol is red ridge. Third is this, is this comes under middle ridge actually. But uh, the potential is more because why Kadapa is giving more uh, diverse, uh, diverse crops, turmeric, banana, paddy, they do. But in Karnal Rishi, only paddy there. That's why the difference. So, the indicators uh, the distribution is With respect to water distribution, quantity of water versus acreage, how many acres of different crops. And again, that will be in turn with, uh, it will be related with the yield. <coughs> so, though it is, though uh, Karnal is in head ridge, but Kadapa and Chittur, you can see Chittur and their, their irrigation, utilization, water reception is more here because of the diversified crops. Similarly, to evolve the crop water allocation pattern for an optimal use of canal water for multiple crops in the study area. So not only canal water, and I told you the rainfall occurs and the groundwater recharge occurs. So there, that also has to be monitored and uh, the supply of water has to be monitored. That can be done with respect to various regression statistical analysis and this has been done purely from the research point of view. So summary as I told you, as I through the graphs, I told you 
everywhere the irrigation potential created made lot of maximum impact all the commercial crops irrigated crops have been uh, given more potential and certain of the districts are giving more uh, uh, water use efficiency so this is all about the, the results and uh, there are certain limitations for this study only thing limitations are listed here about uh, what is the uh, limitations one is availability of satellite data and the uh, extensive natural uh, but these are uh, these are all the tools used by the department people farmers are not related this now the government is giving the funds and sometimes the problem is sometimes you are getting the satellite data because of the cloudiness uh, the availability data is a main limited factor that is the only limitation otherwise funds requirement to naturally the we are doing the if you if you take the larger area we are evaluating if you do the physical it's very difficult and it is very costly also but by using the remote sensing we can easily access we can easily uh, find out the uh, water is efficiency or we can easily relate the water you can relate water releases with respect to the cloud heat so these are all the suggestions for with respect to i, I, I thought uh, our, all our research people is attend anyway yeah. huh? okay you can uh, these are all the suggestions uh, some of the people doing mtech or phd can take up this uh, suggestion future research work they can work on irrigation performance assessment may be extended to other areas of irrigation commands freely available public domain satellite data fusion of multi sensor data is desirable and recently launched sentinel 2 with the dacometric spatial relation resolution and high visiting frequency may be used for irrigation project seasonal crop classification so this is about this probably you might have under the agricultural level the gist is this you are studying in the irrigation engineering those things when you join in the department you have to apply our people are also your seniors are also doing it the other way of doing it is easily is by utilization of remote sensing that course is also there for you in final year you are going to study and similarly for phd students they can take up this type of work easily uh, by the by our uh, staff in uh, department of uh, soil and water engineering in tmi so with this i will conclude thank you is the project continuing no this is over every time what we do we are reporting up to 2018 it because that fellow submitted in 2019 But still, still, but still, work is going on. Work, why work is going on? They are expanding. See, the the entire wow, but actually it is planned for 15 TMC only for irrigation. But you cannot stop. No, it is not. They closed the not through the pipeline. It is open canals. So naturally, the people will utilize it. Afterwards, though, it is contemplated as a area water being a water problem. Now they made it as a multi-purpose valley. So on the water availability is also all the flood waters are entering uh, into Krishna Basin, and the end point will be the Andhra Pradesh. So all the flood waters we are using it somewhere. It has to go to sea. Instead we are diverting it as. But 15 EM, so 15 EM is guaranteed for the Chennai. Over and above we are using the for irrigation. 